this is the unit that we're working with this is the type of package that it comes in you know it's a i think it's called alexar firefly or something like this we'll zoom in on it in the microscope but this is the casing if you guys have similar device that failed check out the description box uh, that's how you can get a hold of us if this needs to be repaired or recovered or whatever we're gonna do today I'll explain the difference between repair and the recovery so the repair is that this unit is obviously broken if you look on the connector off of it you don't need to be an expert to tell me that <laughs> this part right here is a little bit angular it needs to be straight so the force that was applied to it when it was in the, and this device has an integrated connector into a circuit board so it's a extended circuit board but that has a four pin connector and that connector just sticks out from the shell like this right so when you plug it into your usb port this part sticks out and uh, the rest of the usb is housed in this plastic enclosure but when it comes to uh, bending this device the flex line is right there and when we pop this thing out that's exactly where it st starts to bind right there we definitely have a circuit damage as you can see this thing is running on a silicon motion controller and the part number for that controller is EN3257LT-L sorry LTL-AB I can see there are fractures in uh, some traces we have a fracture here here some of these may be broken obviously we've got a buckled controller if you can pay attention to that that's very important it's broken off in cases like this guys don't just uh, add a little bit of flux and flow the chip thinking you're gonna make it work you won't first of all uh, you're putting extra stress on the device you're damaging it more and uh, this has to be uh, initially if we're going to be fixing it this needs to be lifted cleaned uh, straightened patched and then replaced uh, alternative to that would be a chip off procedure this is a, a bga 132 actually no bga 152 component here uh, with uh, this chip removed you can put it into a socket like this from pc3000 and this socket will allow us to um, to read a, a physical dump of this chip whatever is inside of this chip in form of blocks pages etc will be uh, saved as a binary data file then we can start working with that binary data file and try to build data uh, simulating the function of the controller uh, but through software now uh, when we read uh, data uh, from the device blocks are not arranged in uh, a chronological order they're not starting from block zero and then eventually rolling down uh, there they could be in different locations so we need to find how this uh, how these uh, blocks need to be arranged by uh, figuring out how the controller algorithm was set up replicating it building uh, a link of these blocks so that they're all lined up sequentially is going to allow us to see the content properly the price process is lengthy uh, in some cases it's uh, very intricate uh, I mean for this controller it's probably straightforward but for some cases it's very very difficult and uh, in this case um, there is a third way uh, and my preferred way to deal with things like that you need to have another working device if we uh, use another device that is just like this and remove the memory from that and if the rest of the components are the same then maybe we don't need to do any additional uh, work there is one that I have right here it's a 16 gigabyte version of same unit a uh, different color but same unit packaging of the memory is different um, ceramics are all the same you see the um, R6 and R7 they're switched we have R7 and R6 and possibly we have a SM controller on the bottom one yeah so SM3257 ENL and this is EN3257L how important that is don't ask me I don't know it's trial and error um, I would just swap the original native controller from this unit here that's something we can attempt to use as a donor 
here's another example um, of, of uh, also same type of packaging for the memory but the board is different if you look at it uh, we have controller and the memory on one side and the NAND on the other side here whereas this one has two landing pads for the memory on the connector and the controller but the controller side doesn't have a landing pad for the memory on this device so that's uh, something that would have come in the same package but uh, would not be compatible so that's why I'm saying hunting a donor uh, can get challenging and probably will get challenging if you don't have them at your disposal like I do uh, to make it happen I'm going to take the controller I'm gonna clean it I'm gonna take the memory I'm gonna clean it I'm gonna pre-tin both of them and I'm gonna do the same prep for uh, the bone donor board as well preferably use a jig for something like this it will uh, give you a lot more control of your device definitely use uh, fume extraction so that's the noise you're hearing right now to pull the chip off I'm gonna use this special uh, mix of uh, super low melt solder and flux and drop some flux memorize the orientation so the lettering is going that way from connector and put in the tip for the iron and we can start And that's it the memory is off it's not even hot to touch it's removed I'm gonna run some regular solder over it this new stuff this is it you see these pads are golden I'm just gonna run a little bit of solder over them just so that they get tinned up So now we're just gonna grab our wick and clean pads off. That's done. Now it's time for the controller to be removed, and that we're gonna use uh, hot air at 365. Carefully pull it up. Add a little bit of alcohol to uh, clean things up for the surface. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is our donor. Now we're gonna do exact same thing, but for uh, the patient. The patient, I'm gonna clip. Up through the front
but patient is going to be removed with uh, hot air entirely we're not going to be we're not going to be able to uh, use uh, low melt solder in here chances are this controller will come off uh, much easier because it's got a lot of fats that are snap you can see how many of them got pulled off the board The controller is clean, uh, we will need to tin it up. There is no ground pad on the uh, on the center on the board, so we don't need to ground it up through the chip. Now let's take the memory off. the memory component off we uh, do the same thing clean it and then prepare it for mount so you can uh, see that there is one pad that's been pulled that could have been during the extraction of the chip but chances are because of the stress that the board had gone through uh, when it flexed that thing popped off we add a little bit of paste grab a spatula You don't have to do it this way, you can just keep the stencil on there and heat right directly over it. But I like to uh, drop the chip down. I'm really concerned about the uh, balls that are in the center, the outside ones, they don't make any uh, contact for the signals, just the structural support. Uh, lock it in this way. For the chip we have um, a corner that is on the slant that's um, our navigation to pin number one and on the uh, face of the chip we have we should have a dot right there that's where the number one is going to line up but first we actually need to add a little bit of flux here and here we're gonna do both chips at the same time when we reflow so let's just smother it and um, line things up so to line it up force of tension will do uh, the heavy work for us Kind of line it up like that and for the chip we remember that our letters had a specific direction and that's what we're going to use as a guide now because this is all the connections on the uh, controller chip are externally accessible 
we don't really need to worry about the amount of uh, tinning that we do to the pads once uh, the, the component is pulled in um, we can add more solder later with the iron so in here again we're gonna step up to 40 for the airflow and for the temperature I'm gonna get back to 365 turn on our fume extraction and let's get cooking first I'll uh, heat up the controller so that it's um, so that it's settled Then we can go on to the NAND. All right, that's um, that's it. Now the one last piece we need to take is to swap this R7 from R6. this next step I'm gonna use this really precise iron with a knife's edge to give a bit more solder bolster these uh, solder connections see that one bridge there we'll deal with it in a second gonna give it a one quick heat up one more time just now that it's got enough uh, solder on it it will actually position itself perfectly but from tension you see I'm trying to move it out but it pulls itself in the center that's it now let's compare rest of the ceramics and uh, if everything looks good we can start it up oh, we're gonna clean it first obviously but then we can start it up so R18 in place R7 in place R28 R13 in place capacitors in place everything else is looking good so as long as we got full connection on everything now we should get a working device as good as new I mean literally it's almost as good as new I said that we're not gonna put on connector right we can just test it this way we have a working shell not broken and still good I will borrow the bottom side from this case here we go this is as good as new now connected plug this into um, Tipspar's USB stabilizer so through this control panel guys we can power on our unit as you can see it's uh, consuming 50 milliamps it's displaying a 64 gigabyte device uh, 59.6 in this case it's Lexar and we can go into our studio 
and our studio will um, allow us to see this device when it's all mounted up. Now I like to have them side by side so you guys can see the final picture and uh, there's no magic here this is just how it's how it is um, we can see that this Lexar USB flash drive is now appearing here and there's a partition one that's available to us how do we know that what I'm showing you is actually this device that we just fixed well because it's connected to USB control panel and we'll go to sector map sector map shows us all of the activity that the drive is performing and if we go into hex view on our partition one device you can see that positions on the map start to change as we scroll our unit we stop it stops we scroll more it keeps moving so looking at this the device is pretty full I'd say it's like 90% full opening it up you see it's trying to scan the file system up here uh, but if we select everything the unit shows that it's got 50 0.6 gigabytes of data so pretty much full to the top uh, time to save it all onto uh, a new device and deliver it back to the client that's pretty much all there is guys the unit is saved the unit is working I'm glad to be back guys uh, see you on the regular I don't know how many videos I'll be making a week I'm gonna try to keep that number lighter uh, you know um, I do see that you know a lot of content that I post tends to be uh, similar so we keep it maybe one to two times a week uh, videos will be coming out uh, but they will be coming out we won't have uh, pauses like we just had uh, things are stabilizing I'm happy uh, with how things are going thank you for your support if you have any suggestions uh, drop them in the comments below uh, in the next couple of episodes I'll be making a very very exciting announcement uh, something that a lot of people ask me about and uh, I'm finally thinking uh, biting the bullets on it and giving it a go so a little suspense for you there uh, thank you so much i'll see you all in the next episode